Welcome to our presentation, Voices of Distant Students at Queen's University. My name is Maria Cardoso, an Associate Director in Arts and Science Online, and I will be presenting today with my colleague, Heather Carter. Hello, I'm Heather, and I am the Student Engagement Lead with Arts and Science Online at Queen's University. Today, we will be exploring the demographics of distant students, the unique needs of this group of students, how to use this data to inform and develop ways to enhance supports. Let's start by explaining what is Arts and Science Online? What is ASO? We're part of the Faculty of Arts and Science at Queen's University. ASO offers six different BA degree options. English, the Global Development, History, Life Science, Psychology, and Liberal Studies. Psychology is our most popular degree program. We also offer six different certificate options, the most popular being academic writing and employment relations. We design and offer over 140 online courses, not just in these subjects, but also in other programs such as chemistry, drama, geography, math, philosophy, just to name a few. These other grad uh, online courses can be taken alone, part of the degree or part of the certificate. Arts and Science Online offers four different pathways for distant students to begin their studies. They can submit transcripts and apply for a degree program, apply for a certificate program, or non-degree continuing student. Or they can apply as interest students without transcripts, and this way they can take only one course at a time as they start. Courses are taken by both on-campus students and distant students. And the total enrollment have been growing, with last year reaching over 20,000 enrollments. And although the enrollment in online courses for on-campus students shows a small decrease because for the past two years, on-campus courses are also remote due to do COVID, the distant student enrollment shows a steady increase. The ratio of enrollment by distant students versus on-campus students is now at 30% of distant students and 70% and on campus. On-campus students are typical students out of high school doing their degree full-time, taking online courses to manage their timetable or to get ahead. Distant students are a different demographic, as you will see in the following slides. With this growing population of distant students, we decided to do a survey to better understand who our students are, why are they here, and what do they do on a day-to-day -day basis. This 2021 survey is our most recent one, is the fourth iteration of the survey. We've been surveying since 2016. It was sent to all active distant students taking courses during the past academic year, an audience size of 1,728. The response rate has increased with every time we do the survey, and it was this time at 29% with 498 responses. We've learned that our distant students are a very diverse group. 40% respondents identify as being from equity-seeking groups. Their variety of ages, the more than 50% are between 23 and 39 years of age. The average student age is 34. The distant student demographic has become younger since the last survey in 2018, as then the largest group was ages 35 to 45. Also informed us that they have a variety of responsibilities. They have bills to pay, they have dependents, 64% of them work, 53 work full-time. Those that are currently employed come from a variety of in different industries, such as education, healthcare, government, hospitality, and social services. 37% are a parent, guardian, or a primary giver to one or more children. This survey also informed us of their education background. Some have high school, some post-secondary education. The majority, 54% of respondents, have completed a college diploma or a vocational training. Half of the respondents have been out of school for more than five years, and the other half have been out from anywhere from one to five years. 37% of respondents are the first in their immediate family to enroll at the university. Next, we're going to talk about what students have told us about why they've chosen to complete their studies online. 
Almost half of our, the respondents, 45%, have indicated that they have chosen to complete their studies online to accommodate their work schedules. 23% have indicated that they have made this choice so that they can balance their family responsibilities with their studies. And 18% have indicated that they prefer the online learning environment. 38% of respondents are continuing their education for personal satisfaction, while 51% are looking to meet prerequisites for further education or to support a career change. Since 2018, those that are pursuing online education to balance family responsibilities has decreased from 30% to 23%. This may have to do with the fact that our student demographic has gotten younger since the last survey. The Lifestyle Survey has also told us that the most popular social media sites used are Instagram and Facebook. And Facebook has become less popular as the percentage of students using it regularly has dropped from 38% to 29%. We have also learned that our distance students want to see social media posts about topics such as reminders about important dates and deadlines, spotlights on courses, and information on potential career and employment opportunities. The majority of respondents, 51%, prefer to communicate with Queen's ASO team via email, while 11% prefer video chat platform. And this is likely due to the pandemic and the associated rise of Zoom and other video conferencing platforms. The key differences for our distance students from the traditional campus-based student are distance, age, responsibilities, and motivations. Within each of these categories, there are many possible challenges that our students may face, such as difficulty working with classmates, asking for help, accessing university resources, making personal connection, making a tangible connection with the university, managing time and meeting deadlines as well as finding a work-life school balance, having support within their immediate circles, financing their studies, prioritizing their time, avoiding burnout or stress, and seeing the finish line to accomplish their academic goals. So why does this information matter? The information collected from our lifestyle survey helps to inform our supports for students. It guides us in how we design courses, and how we can connect our audience and develop better digital advertisement and communication strategies, as well as to help provide the best possible student supports and build our community. Flexibility is so important for our students. Therefore, our courses are designed with the following in mind. Our instructional designers talk with our instructors about this group of students and why designing a course with flexibility matters. When synchronous sessions are part of the course, we offer multiple live meeting times to accommodate schedules, and those sessions are recorded so that those who couldn't attend can catch up when they are able. We integrate resources into the online course platform. Using UDL for their design ensures that the content is accessible and includes decolonization and inclusion. Other strategies include group work, which offers a way for students to connect with each other, scheduling due dates on a weekend instead of the end of day on a Friday, and the instructional design team is always available for academic support throughout the term. Many distance learners can feel quite isolated over the course of their academic journey, so we try to provide as many supports, many student supports as possible to guide them along. We have included a list of our services on the slide, but would like to highlight a few of them today. We offer live perspective student webinars several times during each application cycle. We offer the live sessions at different times of the day to accommodate busy schedules and different time zones. We run live orientation webinars at the beginning of term to bring awareness about the various supports and tools that are available to our students to help them succeed. We invite all students to participate in our peer mentor program. Upper year distance students are matched with first year distance students to help guide them to various other supports within the university and to give them firsthand personal advice on what strategies 
that may have worked for them. We also have a dedicated academic advisor who supports our students with academic matters with a flexible schedule, including evening hours by email, telephone, or by virtual meetings through Zoom or Teams. Our closed Facebook group is for distance students only and is a place where our students can support each other by creating study groups and post questions for each other. Other university supports that are available to our distance students include those that you see on the screen, just to name a few. As a result of the pandemic, more services transitioned to supporting students virtually, eliminating barriers to access for distance students, making services more accessible. A few examples include Career Services has pivoted to run virtual career fairs. Student Wellness now offers remote, and med remote medical and mental health appointments. Student Academic Success Services runs their 6 p.m. workshop or webinar online so that our online learners can participate. Distance learners have always been the core of the students that we serve within Arts and Science Online at Queen's. Our lifestyle survey has been a very important part of how we adapt or enhance our, our courses and services because we know that our students are unique and they have their own barriers that contribute to their success. As we continue to listen to the voices of our students, we hope that our distance learners can achieve their goals and make the trip to campus to attend their convocation ceremonies. The photos you see on this screen are of, of our actual students. Some are still working on their programs while others have graduated. To end our presentation, we would like you to meet Laura. Laura is a student who will be who we follow during the course of her academic journey with Arts and Science Online. fascinating world of psychology, the science of behavior and the mind. Throughout this course, you'll gain scientific insight into what makes people think, feel, and behave the way that they do. I want you to imagine you're sitting in front of a patient. How are the latest scientific findings going to guide your treatment decisions? I also hope that it encourages you to examine your own assumptions and those of our culture about children and their development. Procrastination at university level is super common. The question then is how do you get past it? And with this, we end our presentation.